what's up guys? It is Maiden Voyage in a Swampland. I am taking this quick opportunity to uh, say hi and do the intro because it's a windy day. I don't get a break in spring. This is my first time in a swamp on a kayak this spring during the weekend. Uh, lucky me, right? Ooh, there's stuff over there. But yeah, you can see the spider ducks are out. Uh, there's other swamps that have, I guess you could say more spider ducks, but right here should be fine uh, for uh, some of the things I'll be doing today, which is snakehead fish. Ooh, that was a carp, by the way, not a snakehead. Uh, but yeah, I am looking for that snake. We'll start off with this area here. I'll probably gonna throw the frog first, but there are lures that I want to throw today because spring is all about the subsurface fishing. Uh, but with the wind blowing, you see over there, the wind is pretty crazy. So certain spots, it could be uh, windy and you see, you hear the wind picking up right now. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting for me. I am hoping to slay some snakes today, but uh, you know, this spot is not like it used to be. We'll see, let's go guys. So since uh, I am in this area without much wind for now, I want to do a quick introduction to the lure I'll be using today. This is my homemade chatterbait type style. Well, I can't use the word chatterbait because uh, Z-Man has, <laughs> you know, um, patented that name. Uh, but guess what? They didn't patent the blade because it's not there to begin with. Eagle Claw was the first to create the, the style blade. Well, not exactly the shape, but you know, the, the concept of uh, bladed swim jigs. But yeah, this is my bladed swim jig. Very easily made from wires. I probably should use thicker one for snakehead fishing today because I'm doing snakeheads. But you know, all you have to do is pick your favorite hook, your weight. I have a swag of tungsten, three, three eighth ounce cone shape, okay? And just a blade, generic blade. I got that from Count Bass. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. And today I'm trying something a little different. Guggen baits, that's right. Yes, guys. Jimbo is gonna give the Guggen bait a try. I love fluke lures and I have pretty good confidence that uh, any fluke lures uh, should work. And uh, this pack comes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten pieces. They call this the, uh, I guess, the dart five inch. Watermelon red is my go to color, but today you can see the water's kind of stained. I think it still will work. It has some nice scent to it. Oh yeah, so uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. You know, sometimes it's good to uh, match the water color because that's what kind of fish uh, blend into. And then you add a, a little bit of flash, right? So that's where my blades are gonna uh, be flashing. It's gonna be vibrating. It's gonna be the key of catching some snakes. Let's go, man. So most um, bladed swim jigs are um, not weedless, but doing this, you could use your own favorite hook, whatever hooks you want to use. So, yep, I got my Gamagatsu. This is a three aught maybe. Probably should use a super line version for um, snake heads, but this is what I use for bass that one fall trip and uh, I was slaying it. So I'm gonna continue using it until I need to make another one. All right, I'm, Jimbo's just trying to make this rig exactly perfect because there is a groove on the top right there. There we go. And I should hide it just a little bit. I'm gonna bury it just a little bit. They got a nice bite force anyway, so you can rip it right through. Oh yeah, you see the, my rod tip? Right, let me give you some more line. Oh yeah, this is gonna vibrate crazy. Very finessey, very, very finessey. Let's go guys. Well, while I'm here, I might as well give it a shot. By the way, I am sitting low today, but right now I'm in a spot where there's not much wind, so I'll stand for a little bit, but I have a feeling I'll get blown all over the place, but I want good angles for you guys, so I'm gonna give this a shot from here. Yeah, this is gonna be a windy day. I might have to uh, stay hunkered down low and just, you know, find a cove and just cast. Uh, sometimes it's good in these early spring times because sometimes snakes don't want to deal with all these uh, type of uh, conditions. So what they do is they stay in these areas. They stay in those spots right over there, spots where the wind doesn't really impact much. So I'm casting right towards those banks right there. And hopefully I could entice one of those fish to bite. And plus, if I'm fishing near the uh, edges, I might be able to get one or two bass that are probably bedding by now here. Uh, many of the smaller dink ponds, there's a swamp by the way, ponds, they were bedding, and some of the other swamps, they are bedding. But this is a bigger swamp, deeper water too, tidal water, so uh, the water here is a little cooler. So I don't know if the bass are bedding, 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 but uh, we'll give it a shot. Whatever uh, bites, bites, you know what I'm saying? It's all game. I know you guys probably like to uh, have a little bit of uh, info of what I'm using today. So I got the Spartacus 2 from Cast King, spooled with 30 pound braided line. Uh, it's Cast Pro from Cast King. And also this rod is Speed Demon from Cast King, the Speed Demon Pro. 
Uh, seven foot six inch medium heavy action. Allows me to sling little lures like this pretty darn far. But yeah, the wind is picking up, uh, so um, we'll see how things go, man. By the way, when uh, things are slow, you guys can always throw a weedless swim bait. Slow it down, all right? So this is a 1 8 ounce VMC heavy duty swim bait hook. And uh, so you I like to use small stuff in the spring, so this is gonna be perfect. So, uh, yep, I'm gonna swing around, get back out in the open, paddle to the next cove, and uh, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna slow it down and try to throw it into some, uh, some cover and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I'll avoid some of those black algae of death because I think this side right here is a little shallower. Uh, I'm pretty much hitting the mud like immediately when I cast it. And also when I'm paddling, you see some stumps right there. I'm actually hitting some stumps. And uh, yeah, I don't want to flip like last time. What happened was uh, I got stuck on one of those stumps and the wind blew and I kind of swung around and it, I lost balance and I fell. So uh, yeah, new experience for me fishing uh, I guess timber, timber water. That's like the biggest log here with a thousand turtles on it and no fish around a log. That's, that's, I don't know, man. The heck, fishing a post front day has been very difficult. I even went downsizing to a swim bait. Right now I'm throwing it on a, basically a medium light tackle, got some, 15 pound or 20 pound braided line and then 40 liter and a swim bait, saucy swimmer, Guggen swim bait. And um, yeah, man, no cigar. Haven't had a tap, haven't seen any more movements, but yeah, right now it's no good, man. Outside, I'm being blown all over the place. And um, yeah, I, I see a lot of dust around here, man. The, the fish are swimming around me. They're probably curious, but they want nothing. I tried to frog, tried to, um, blade a swim jig, and now I'm finessing. Oh, I reel up too quick. I think it might have been a fish. No, it looks like a turtle. The way that the flat back down. Yeah, it's a turtle. Ah! No, that's a baby snake. Baby snake. Oh my gosh, it was on the tail. Oh, that's interesting. All right, small little guy. I could probably BFS fish this place. But uh, yeah, that, that was interesting. Wait, what? So guys, that was a little bit interesting. I caught a really, really nice bass and uh, I wasn't even recording. I mean, it's, the wind has been uh, kicking up here so I sometimes don't hear the beeping. I, uh, but uh, that's my first fish of the day. I'm pretty stoked. Uh, I hope I'll catch another one. I think I'll just do what I was been doing, just casting it open and uh, yeah, just a windblown side. Maybe I'll get another fish to bite, but dude, I got it on my little rig right here that I created. So happy, so happy. Even though it wasn't on video, the whole hookup and whole everything, I was actually uh, uh, torn by it. But you know what? Sometimes it's okay, you know? I got it in my own noggin right here. All right, so back to fishing. Into the wind, into the open. Cross my legs. <sighs> Lean back. Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah. Wow, that's the biggest bass I ever caught in my life. Oh my gosh. Duh. Title bass. Tidal bass, let's go, let's go. No, 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 dude, it's freaking thick and huge. Oh man, <laughs> holy smokes, holy smokes. Oh man, he got a, a little bad eye there, but this is humongous. Holy smokes, guys. Oh man, <laughs> ah! oh my gosh. Okay, 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 hold up, hold up, guys. You gotta handle this. Oh man, folks, look at this big, humongous bass. It has an interesting eye right there. It has a, a blind eye. It looks like it was poked in the eye, but this thing is 
humongous, humongous. I have my scale right here. All right, here we go. We turned on, clamped this baddie right here. All right, this thing is, no way, there's no way this thing is freaking 3.67 pound. 3.7, no way, definitely not a PB. But I don't think this is a, this is right. No, I don't think this is right. All right, so this is 3.7 pounds. That doesn't look right at all. I mean, look at this, guys. Uh, I mean, I'm Asian, and I'm a little small, but uh, you know, this is huge, huge. But anyway, I gotta say goodbye to this thing. Put it back in the water, let it breathe a little bit. Let the air go through its gills. Interesting looking eye. All right. But let me hold on right here. I'm gonna actually use my phone right there to do a goodbye release for my, uh, I guess, Instagram. But yeah, look at him right now. He's doing pretty good, so um, yeah. All right, so we are now standing and casting. There's some nice pads over there and there's a nice bank over there. It's very calm. Uh, so far, as you guys may have seen from the other parts i don't know if i'm gonna even use those clips but uh i fished many many coves so far that's kind of like that but a lot smaller uh let's pads and they were fish around i don't know what kind of fish they were but none of them none of them were uh interested in the frog or any other lures i've thrown like the swim bait so, so um yeah this is the most windblown side here they gotta at least have one or two either here or over there hiding and um it's Jimbo's job to find out. All right. Oh, see that? He hit me. <laughs> well, there's a snake right over there. Oh, guys, you would not believe this. Like, I was just chit chatting here, I did a quick cast. I shut off my uh, camera so because I want to save the chat and I hooked up and I forgot to press the button but here he is I am fighting this snake well he's done fighting uh, I turned around grabbed my lipper gripper and I looked down when I re-angled my uh, camera but dude that's two today two in a row two fish in a row where I done it what the heck is going on Jimbo you are fail boat today biggest fail boat ever but let me just get him in there. Yes, here we go. We got him. We got him. Uh, let me just make sure I got him properly. All right, here we go. Boom. Look at that. Snake. This is a thick snake. So there are babies out there. Like there are babies. So this could be a reason why that some of these snake heads are not biting because they are bedding. All right. And uh, there were a lot of fries over there a lot and so uh, let's see i was using a guggen swim bait so he smashed it i need to get it open so you guys can see it and uh yee. all right i see it it's time to do some operation dude you got some strong jaws look at this guy he don't even want to open his mouth like it took a while for him to even open up just a little bit for me so i'm just gonna uh, look at that he is mean all right, one last look right here for you guys. All right. Woo, this is the biggest snake of the year so far. Wee, swim bait, let's go. I found a goldfish. See that orange thing right there? That is a goldfish. Not, not my lure, but that tail that's right over here. Uh, I don't want to stand up because the wind is still blowing and there is another snake right there because obviously there's always two snake heads. I don't know which one hit me, but Let's see if I can get you guys another snake head and hopefully it's on video this time, but, oh, see that? But anyways, uh, let me put this right here. I was hoping that goldfish would move, but let me paddle backwards. But yeah, there's a pod right there and a pod to the right. So it could be four snake heads here. I don't know, it could be two. Uh, one pod with, uh, you know, with one parent. I have no idea, it could be more. Like, cause this is probably the shallowest, muckiest spot. And look at that, something just popped over there. Like I didn't even see the bait there. I was just looking and hopefully there was one snake headed there. But um, yeah, that's interesting. All right, so there's snakes here. I can't believe it's only May 2nd. 
man, it's been a warm, warm spring for us. So uh, let me just get this out here into some of those spots here. Never know if there's another one hiding back there. These slow moving water, that's a key for some of these snakeheads uh, to spawn early. They find a nice spot like this cove right here. There's a lot of bait fish here. Uh, there's a lot of, oh, here it goes. Got him. What, is that a bass? Hey, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Everyone always asks, do these freaking fish ever bite this, you know, these colorful frogs? Well, they do. Here we go, all right? There we go. All right, here we go. He probably got bumped into one of those logs over there, but uh, off he goes, off he goes. Well, guys, that was one interesting trip, yeah? I mean, uh, Jimbo didn't do a good job recording some footage. I mean, those two big fish, the snakehead and the bass, I, uh, I mean, I love the new GoPro Hero 9 Black. Uh, it's been the most crisp and also it's uh, probably more stable than any of my GoPros. I could turn it one notch higher to be even more stable, but then it crops the whole screen and you guys can't really see anything when I fish. Um, but yeah, there's one bug that I still don't like that have not been addressed. And that is when you use loop mode, you hit the, the record button, within less than a second, it'll just beep again. So with the wind, sometimes I can't tell if the beep was, um, well, I guess I could because it beeped multiple times, but sometimes I just don't hear it. And uh, I don't know if the, the GoPro was running or not. And unfortunately twice today, it was not running. Hi, hey, uh, but still guys, I did an okay job catching fish. I thought it was a tough day. Uh, fishing these post front conditions, it's very windy. I'm being blown all over the place. As you can see, during my extra, I am in a cove that's less windy, but you know, I'm still being blown all over the place. But anyway, guys, I don't want to hold you up too long because this wasn't that great of a video. I just want to say thank you for uh, watching my videos. And if you guys are out and about during spring, this is a great time to go catch fish. So um, the fish don't wait, man. Get out there, catch some fish. If you guys have any questions about any things that, any of the things I've used today, feel free to leave me a comment below. Uh, but yeah, that was one interesting bass with a little partially, I guess it is blind, right? Because it was white, one white-eyed uh, bass, right? Hey, I wonder what happened. I really don't know, but uh, I saw it looks like something may have poked the eye because it was uh, a little messy. But uh, that's interesting. But anyway, like I said, I'm not gonna hold you guys up. Thank you for watching. Until next time.